Hello and welcome back to our channel Chemistry with Coffee. Let's see what we are going to learn today. And it is determination of unknown concentration by UV visible spectrophotometer. Let's start. For example, if you were given an unknown sample and asked to find out how much KMnO4 or potassium permanganate is present in it, how would you do it? Before trying to solve it, Let's start understanding about UV visible spectroscopy and its applications. Beer Lambert's law is like a principle to UV visible spectroscopy. Certain compounds absorb UV visible radiation and that energy is used in the excitation of electrons from ground state to the excited state. And the remaining light energy is transmitted or released. Beer Lambert's law states that as the concentration of solution increases, its absorbance also increases or the amount of light absorbed by a solution is directly proportional to its concentration. Absorbance A is equal to log I0 divided by I. So I0 is incident light and I is transmitted light. Beer Lambert's law that is A is equal to epsilon Cl. Here A is the absorbance, epsilon is molar absorptivity, C is the concentration and L is the path length of cuvette. It is usually 1 cm. At the bottom we have the diagram of UV visible spectrophotometer. Handling it is very simple. First let's have a look inside the instrument. A light source produces UV visible light which will pass through a monochromator. The monochromator removes unwanted wavelengths of light from the light beam and allows only single wavelength light. In this case it is 525 nanometer. The light ray then passes through the glass or quartz made cuvette containing sample solution. Some amount of light will be absorbed by the KMnO4 solution present in the cuvette, leaving the other into the detector. The detector detects the amount of light absorbed by the sample by comparing with the initial light or incident light. To find out the lambda max of your sample, at the beginning, you may pass through all wavelengths of UV visible light and see where the sample solution absorbs at its maximum, which is called lambda max. On the right hand side, we have a UV visible spectra of a bis triphenyl phosphine nickel 2 chloride. Lambda max for this compound is 445 nanometer, as you can see a peak there. For KMnO4, its lambda max is 525 nanometer. So we are going to use only 525 light for our entire experiment. First, prepare KMnO4 stock solution by dissolving the unknown KMnO4 sample in deionized water to a certain concentration in a 1 liter standard flask. Then prepare 5 standard solutions or a series of 5 solutions of increasing concentrations from the above prepared stock solution and di water label them as 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 molar respectively potassium permanganate or kmno4 lambda max is 525 nanometer that is in the kmno4 absorption spectra there is a peak at 525 nanometer this is where the compound absorbs at its maximum which is called lambda max now Record the absorbance of standard solutions one by one at 525 nanometer using UV visible spectrophotometer. Before jumping into the experiment, first take a clean cuvette and fill it with DI water and run the experiment at same 525 nanometer. This is called a blank run. Blank run is when light passes through the solvent in the cuvette. It is important to record a blank so as to make sure no light is absorbed by the solvent and the cuvette. Blank spectra are used to subtract the background noise from the sample spectra and it will be recorded once for an entire experiment. It's good to record a blank for every 6 hours. Same way measure the absorbance of 5 standard solutions and note them in the lab book against their concentrations as shown at the top left. To run the first solution, rinse the cuvette and then fill it with the same solution. Before placing it in the cuvette holder, wipe the outer surface of cuvette with a Kimi wipe. 
then run the experiment to measure its absorbance. Note down its absorbance value from the computer screen. Similarly, collect the data for all the five standard solutions. Once we have the absorbances of all the five standard solutions, plot the calibration curve. The absorbance values go onto the y axis and the concentration values onto the x axis. Place the data on MS Excel and make a scatter plot as shown. I will make a video on how to make a scatter plot in MS Excel and to get y is equal to mx plus c equation and also r squared value. From this plot, note down the molar absorptivity from the slope. Here, slope that is m is equal to molar absorptivity epsilon multiplied with path length. So we can rearrange this formula. It becomes epsilon is equal to slope divided by L. Now we have epsilon value ready. Measure the absorbance of unknown solution. Same as we did earlier for the standard solutions. Using Beer Lambert's law that is A is equal to epsilon CL, calculate the concentration of unknown solution. As we have the unknown solutions absorbance, molar absorptivity and path length of cuvette that is L is equal to 1 centimeter. We can now just rearrange the Beer Lambert's law formula as below to calculate the concentration of unknown KMnO4 solution. That is A is equal to epsilon CL becomes C is equal to A divided by epsilon and L. To calculate the unknown concentration, let's substitute all the values we have in the formula. That is C is equal to A divided by epsilon L. Unknown solutions absorbance is 0.64, molar absorptivity is 1.86 and path length of cuvette is 1 cm. So C is equal to 0.64 divided by 1.86 into 1. So do the math and uh, you will get 0.344. This is the concentration of our unknown solution. Okay, let's review what we have learned today. Certain compounds absorb UV visible light and their electrons get excited. The absorption pattern and lambda max are unique for a specific compound. Beer Lambert's law is amount of light absorbed is directly proportional to the concentration of solution. For the experimental procedure, prepare standard solutions from the stock solution, measure their absorbance at the lambda max, plot a calibration curve and calculate epsilon, measure unknown absorbance and calculate the concentration of unknown solution. Okay friends, that's it for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Please feel free to post any suggestions or questions in the comment section below. See you all next week with one more interesting and important topic in chemistry. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel Chemistry with Coffee.